and here the CS 2020 and uh, you're launching a new smart glass right here hey <laughs> hey Jarbox how are you my man so um, so which are these yeah, so at CES, we're actually announcing two new products or showing two new products. This is the M4000. A lot of folks might be familiar with Vuzix M400, which is an enterprise-based pair of smart glasses used for warehouse picking, used for field service applications, remote support, those kinds of things. This is the same device, but here it sports a see-through optical system. So the cool thing about this is I'm working, I'm seeing the real world, so maybe I'm picking parts out of a out of a bin, let's say, and I'm seeing the parts and I'm seeing what I'm supposed to pick. So I don't have to think through what I saw in a in a touchpad over here that says pick five out of bin three. I can literally see pick five and I'm looking at bin three. And when I look over at bin two, it says pick two. And so you can never get it wrong. It's really a much more accurate way to pick. It's also can be safer because it's optically see-through and you're seeing the environment around you. The other product that we're showing at CES is Smart Swim. So this one is a, a smart glass for swimming. Yes, that's correct. And it's stable in the water? Oh yeah, no doubt about it. In fact, I, you know, swimming it can be a relatively boring thing. I mean, you're in, you're in the pool. <laughs> Sorry. No problem. All right. There's some. Uh, some... Okay. There's some demos over there. Yeah. So. Um, so swimming, swimming can be a little bit boring. Yeah. With these glasses, these smart glasses, you can actually even watch Netflix now or movies. Um, you can watch training videos while you're in the pool. It'll do your lap counts, etc. Yeah, let's go right over here with the, the smart swim. So you have it um, waterproof. The whole thing is waterproof. Yeah, in fact, Craig here can give you a little bit more information about it. Craig, sure. you want to give us the quick? Oh, sure, the quick uh, five second tour. Well, this is, this is music smart swim. It's yeah. a head-up display for swimming. It renders an image of your cell phone on your eye while you're swimming. It attaches to your goggle. We support over 20 different brands. And basically it has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, and it's got an uh, accelerometer and gyroscope for lap training. It'll run for five hours to seven hours, depending on the application. So these are the kind of the screens you can have? These are some of the screens for lap training. So it basically replaces your sport watch. It's like all the information is real-time delivery of the information as you are swimming or training. But imagine watching videos, streaming real-time YouTube videos as you are training. Training videos, chasing the Olympic record line, or maybe you just want to be entertained while the process of healing your body is happening. The coach can give you real-time information? Yes, yes. And it's a full-color display. Yes. And and you can uh, you could be swimming across the the channel yes. and you can have GPS GPS so you can give you a course outline and a course map you can follow the course map as you're swimming it also this is alligator lighthouse swim here this came right out of our system and the lines are very clean it's a very clean GPS system I don't so know, I don't know, you know what it's like when you're doing when you're doing open water swim you swim if you, swim you stop direction. and you look up and you try to find a buoy and then you correct so this is a straight line. It's a beeline to the buoy with That's these glasses like, uh, on. That's like the guy who has this on is going to win every time. He's going a lot less distance. <laughs> now that's yeah. going to get lost. That's for sure. <laughs> but is it allowed? Uh, so on certain events, they allow it. Uh, any of the sanctioned events, no. If it's a national championship, no, you can't wear it in competitions. But they might update the whole system. That now. might change. They might say that everybody has that to wear change. one. Most of the open water events that I go to, they embrace it. They love the technology. They want to see it out there. You're about connecting people. Think about safety. If I could broadcast a message to every swimmer, if there's a problem on the course, you got to get out of the water, that kind of thing. Nice. So how did you make it waterproof? A lot of work. A lot of work? <laughs> yeah, there's, I mean, if you think about it, that's everything that's inside of a phone today and yes. all the work that they had to go through on a phone to make it waterproof we had to do the same sort of thing it's android yeah it's android based right the thing yes. about this is though it's worn right so there's a bunch of other constraints that a phone doesn't have the phone is a fairly mechanical device it's square it's got like square shoulders on it it's a lot easier to secure this is took a lot of work and it, this has to be flexible at the same time because it's got to fit different users different user head sizes so there's a lot of tech that goes into the and with the little um 
elastic band there, it stays uh, stays put where it needs yeah. to be. Every goggle is a little different, but pretty much that's the basic concept. You, you bungee it on. You can bungee it onto a pair of kayaking goggles. You can bungee it onto a snorkeling mask, so we can go snorkeling tour. Imagine diving? a snorkeling tour, not diving. It's one meter down for okay. eight hours. But a snorkeling tour is you're on the surface. It's all surface swimming. So put a GPS course and show people where they want to go for the hot spots on a snorkeling tour, and you just follow the GPS map and away you go. Nice. So Do you have can, a camera? No. We have a camera as an accessory. You can buy this specific camera. And, and then that gets an that's inside the app? There's an app. So we have a carousel. You scroll the carousel and you pick the camera app, and that camera app runs with this camera. Nice. So you can put this camera on the back of your head, and you look down, you see the horizon line, so I can see where I'm swimming without stopping. I can nice. put it on the back of my boat in a kayak, and I can paddle while the hands free, and I can see what's behind the boat without turning around to see what's going on back there. So nice. there's different applications. You Bluetooth can headphones also, so while you're swimming, you've got audio, you're watching the videos. It's all kind of a tight like end to have system. I'd like information about the fish that I'm seeing. Yes. If they're poisonous or not. Yes. That'll yes. come. That'll come. And how far the sharks are. Yeah, well, that too. Someday. Someday all that stuff, right? Some makes people sense. are a bit nervous when they snorkel. It makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Look at something and tell me what it is. Like a warning. Don't touch this uh, jellyfish. Right. Something. Okay. Yes. Yes. That's all right. a really great application. Cool. All right. Thank so let's you. go to Thanks the end. The 4,000 right here. You have a lot of uh, coverage at this show. A partner of music is called Ride On. These are ski goggles. They use our waveguides inside of them. While you're on the hill, it's telling you how fast you're going down the hill. All this information floats way down in front of you. So you're not refocusing on the hill and then the information and then the hill. You know where your friends are because they can all be linked together. Listen to music through these guys. So this is a heads-up display for ski goggles. So it's not the. It's a. It's a new. Pro, it's a different price. It's not the the blade in there. It's not. It's not the blade. It uses a lot of blade components actually, as you might imagine. They can be pretty flexible to be used elsewhere. But it's a lot of the tech that's in a blade, but it's in a form factor. Is it big market goggle. or is it just starting? Well, it's, it's brand new. This thing's just started shipping here in the January time frame. Wow, so it's just in time for this winter. Yes, mm -hmm. correct. Cool, awesome. So let's go to um, the M4000. Yeah, so this is the M4000. And I'm going to let Warren tell everybody about it. Warren, can you give us a kind of a tour, please? Uh, sure. Uh, my name is Warren. I'm showing off the M4000, our newest uh, M-Series device featuring our Music's Waveguide and Display Engine. So they are on right now, huh? Yeah, I'm wearing it. Uh, I can see the screen, I can see the camera, uh, and I can see through. This is a I really big waveguide. It's the whole glass, right? Yeah, it's horizontal, 16 by 9, uh, NH NHD resolution. And it, it's really crisp. Like, I, there's lots of lights coming in, and it's not really intruding on what I'm seeing. Take it off? Yeah. You can take off. I the, can take off yeah. the helmet. Yeah. So, um, so you, a big market. Can you hold it right here? Yeah. Sure. So, a big market for uh, music is the enterprise, right? So, this is um, the latest, the best for that market, uh, right? Correct. This is the second product we're building around our Qualcomm relationship, and this is an enterprise product, and it will be our first like pure enterprise product that has a waveguide display. So, it's. Um, the XR1 CPU is in there? Yeah, the Qualcomm XR1. Uh, we're really happy with this trip. It's been successful in the M400. We're happy to use it again in the 4000. Is the ARM Cortex A53 quad core, something like that? It's a quad core. Quad core, powerful 64 bit, octa core, uh, with a, even a GPU that you can use and everything? Yeah, it's got graphics processor built in, AI engine built in. It's, it's loaded with tech. It's the latest sort of silicon that you could get for a modern phone. So the biggest part of your business is the enterprise, right, so far? That's right, and this, the, a good example is this use case that we have right here. When Warren puts this the hat on, what he can do is he can walk up to a piece of equipment, look at a QR code that's sitting on the gear, and with that it gives you the work instru instructions to assemble this particular job. And the task here is, this is a server box, and he's got to make connections between this box and this box. And the work instructions in the glasses right now are saying, connect, well, why don't you tell us why? Yeah. It says, connect the blue cable to A3 to B11. Uh, see nice. that lights up? Yeah. You got it right? Then, Try the next one. Yeah. And I could use voice, or just use the buttons and touchpad to move on to the next. I like using the buttons. Uh, step two. Connect red cable to A11 to B3. Uh, 
And what's nice is these work instructions are floating right over the work, so it's not like he's got to look someplace else. He's looking where he's working. So, you actually have a lot of customers in the enterprise. It's the bulk of Usix's business today. Enterprise and warehousing, logistics, field service applications, remote support applications. You think about it, you got a worker in the field, he's using his hands. He's doing a job, let's say, that he's not done before. Um, maybe he's done it once or twice and can't remember everything. So he can pull up the work instructions like you just saw here and they come up step by step. If he's lost and can't figure out what he's doing, he can then make a remote support call to an expert that's sitting back at the office. The camera runs, it's a 13 megapixel camera in the front. This camera will stream over the Wi-Fi connection out through the internet to the expert and the guy on the other end says, Frank, let me give you a hand here. So he's looking and he literally can, almost like reaching in and teleporting over Circle items, do this, do this next, unscrew this, all of that stuff with the, the remote export helping out without the remote guy having to get on a car and go and help him to do the work. And you totally have this happening in a big way. Oh, there's, and you've been ha this has been happening for you for a few years now, right? It's really starting to move though. In 2020, you'll see a banner year for Vuzix. The number of companies that are starting to deploy this because the ROIs are so significant is amazing. So yeah, it's finally augmented reality in, in the form of smart glasses is starting to take the market by storm. And you have some uh, partners over there providing, uh, partnering with you on the, on the solution? Yes, that's Maybe right. uh, UB Max? We have a bunch of them here, actually, yeah. to some examples. Yeah. UB Max here. Yeah. They're our partners out of Germany. This young lady is eight side. And you want to give us a quick tour? Sure. So, uh, hello. <laughs> I'm Carly Kroll and I'm with UBMX Inc., which is the U.S. side of our company. We do digital work instructions for the industrial workers. So we have a whole creator tool where you're able to do step-by-step -step workflows and then they get put onto the smart glasses so that the workers would actually have hands-free information in real time. So imagine watching a YouTube tutorial like when you're trying to fix your dishwasher but you're holding your phone or balancing your tablet. Instead the idea is that workers would have videos, pictures, text, all hands-free on the smart devices so that they can have their safety gloves on, have their hands on their equipment and tools, and be able to go through an entire assembly, whether it's an airplane engine or something small. And you have uh, real customers, uh, yes. this is happening. We it's have not over, just like We have cool over 300 tech. customers worldwide, ranging in automotive manufacturing with BMW, Audi, Porsche, John Deere. We also have in logistics, we work with DHL and Coca-Cola Hellenic Bottling Company in multiple countries and locations. So they're really using it? Yes, they they're are. They're not just experimenting? Absolutely, no. We've uh, full rollouts in multiple countries and continents. And one of our other big things, besides the work instructions for inspection and manufacturing, is the logistics aspect. So we integrate to warehouse management systems so that orders would come in the field view of the worker and they would be able to pick and put, whether they're driving a forklift or they're doing it by hand, much quicker and with much more accuracy. And so... Amazon? Uh, Amazon is not one of our current customers, but Walmart is for logistics and DHL in Europe, US, and Mexico. In nice. Because uh, potentially it could be great in like a warehouse. Yes, for the two uh, For like something like Amazon where they right. tell the... Yes, the currently guys to go Amazon around. has their own software that they like to use, but we work in every uh, many other warehouses around the world. Maybe they've exactly automated that. everything. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Well, the idea is, is not, for... not doing, so although machines are extremely helpful, we believe in equipping the workers with wearables to keep them competitive with the robot workforce. So, and also allowing humans to interact with the machine colleagues that they have. And so another thing that we have is a remote support call. So yeah. being able to call an expert wherever they are at any time, uh, you know, or country doesn't matter and get feedback. So rather than having an expert need to fly um, or drive on site to do a repair, they can now do it in real time. So 350 BMW dealerships in the US all use our software with a smart glass device in order to do repairs on BMW. And so it makes the repairs quicker, people get their cars back faster. And the expert might be in Germany. They could be in Germany, exactly. And it's, then uh, boom, uh, it's actually really happening. Yes. It is really being used. Correct. And uh, I guess it must be fun for the workers who have the job that 
use these, right? They're I like think part cool. of it is it can be fun and enjoyable. Um, other things is, is it actually helps make their lives easier. They have less wasted time, less wasted movement. They feel that they are more productive at their jobs, and so it actually makes their work-life balance better. Nice. Awesome. Glasses, they feel like they're Iron Man often, too. Yeah. It's super special with all this cool tech to help get the job done. You're really helping making uh, all these jobs more exciting. I think so. I think less errors, too. So people feel better about, I didn't get it wrong. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, so then you also have a Zoe meet right here. Yes. Maybe we can we can join jump in. And right here is the Zoe meet. Maybe. Uh, hi. So hi. so what's the latest with Zoe meet? So um, the latest is speech intelligence. So, so we've been uh, doing a speech to text uh, on the glasses. You can do a meeting. You see a live text. But what happens after the text? It's a story. You can retrieve it. But there's more to it. You can check the engagement rate, you can check uh, who said what, um, and keywords triggers could be exported into your MS Teams. It's a collaboration. The future of work is distributed, everybody's everywhere. Wear your glasses and be together with the team. So you're making meetings more exciting? Exactly. Um, more interesting, more productive. Get more out of your meetings, so never forget what you said anymore. And you can search through uh, the whole meeting. Yes, you can search. So I, for example, am terrible at taking notes. Uh, <laughs> In fact, you always go back and say, what, what, what? I can't remember what we were going to do there with this. Did he say 20 million or did he say 25 million? Yeah, and then I, I actually have those situations and I look through, oh yes, he actually said that. What was that technology he said? And um, also after the call, what we will do is go through it, lift up certain words, certain things we discuss together, the follow-ups, put it in the email, I send it back to them. Everybody's so impressed. Like, how did you remember all this? I didn't. So what Emit did. So at the Seatec, I was very excited about when you talked about translations. Yes. But you're still going to do it, right? We're still going to do it. For consumers, it's amazing. Uh, for enterprises, I would say wait a little bit because uh, the understanding is um, not good enough for you to reach a decision together, but it's good enough for you to go around and, hey, I understood what you said. That's amazing. So for consumers, yes, absolutely. Do you uh, Bluetooth an external microphone or you just record from the just, glass? Just record from the glass. The, it uh, understands everything that's happening in the room? Um, you might want to connect an external microphone. You can, right? There's Bluetooth. You can, there's all kinds. Uh, there's hundreds of Bluetooth mics that you could hook <laughs> yeah. up to this thing. And you know, you could have a center comm mic that was recording the whole room three-dimensionally even. So yeah, there's lots of options to go with an external mic. You can put a lapel microphone on the speaker. Correct. Correct. Yes. And then uh, see right there. Yeah. But um, and then you use all kinds of APIs to get the speech to text. Um, we're also developing our own because for corporates it's very important. Uh, because uh, the general APIs will always miss the corporate. Uh, I always ask one thing. If you use a general speech engine, the CEO name is always wrong. <laughs> the CEO, the executives, your product names. And this is where we come in, working with the enterprise to ensure the most important things are captured. The I product mean, names. Yeah, the things that you discuss about that is specific to your company. Um, it doesn't matter if the, the accuracy of a general engine says 95% accuracy, but when it comes to your lingo, your corporate names, it, it, if the names are wrong, you're not capturing the correct things. So that, that's why we focus specifically on enterprise solution and it's wonderful working with Vuzix because that's what the customers want. Nice. Yeah. So text to, uh, speech to text is a big deal. Yes, it is. Yeah? It's amazing actually. The guys on the other side of the booth, they're doing sign language communications. Very, very similar, but in this case it's for people with hearing yeah. impairments. Let's go around here. So, can you introduce? Yeah, this is sign glasses. And you know what? The best man is Nathan here. We'll let him yep, I'm with sign glasses. How are you, Nicholas? Hi, right, so what do you do? Okay, so what we do is we do real-time sign language interpretation and captioning through the glasses. Whoa. So our primary goal is to provide equal access to the deaf and hard of hearing community. Uh, there's millions of scenarios where they don't have access to a live sign language interpreter, you know, there. 
wherever they're at, and we're able to connect them with the live sign language interpreter through our software. Is the sign language not international? Every country has different. So we actually use live sign language interpreters, and so the software is built where we can do it internationally in any country. So every country has different sign language? Yep, that's correct. Why? Just different languages. <laughs> In America is American Sign good. Language. Very much like Italian, French, English. Yep, really? Exactly. Yes. Yep. So the Italians they do this the whole time? Yep, yep, Italians. They do that in Argentina too. Okay. <laughs> so you can uh, you can do that by machine learning or somebody's remotely looking in and typing in? So right now we use a live person. So they're they're in a remote area, they're listening, receiving the audio, receiving a video feed, they sign and our software connects that interpreter through the View Six Blades. And ah, able to see in the glass. so a classroom with three or four kids in the classroom, let's say, that need to have access to the signing. So what they do today, right, is you got this person who's doing the sign language on one side of the room, the professor's on the other side of the room, the whiteboard's in the middle, and the poor students going like this back and forth, Whoa. trying to follow it all. Now what happens is the student's sitting there comfortably watching the professor, and next to the professor is the sign language of what's going on, so you can stay well connected to what's going on in the classroom. So it's about sign language in anything. Yep. Everything. Exactly. Yeah, so it, it works in every it situation. That, it solves that big line of sight struggle. So if I'm a deaf person, I don't have to try to look two places at once. I can look at my professor and then see the sign language interpreter in the glasses at the same time. Would it make sense to just have text? It, it's set up for real-time text, too. So we do both. And it just depends on the individual. If their primary language is sign language, they're obviously going to want a signer to be there with them. If their primary language is English and they just want to have a text captioning, we can provide that too. Is it more efficient to do sign language, or for certain for certain situations, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it's working, or it's just a, a concept it's, right no, now? No, it's working. It's live. We've got dozens of schools that are set up using it with their students right now, and then we've got a few companies that are using it for either deaf customers or deaf employees to help them with trainings and meetings and things like that. So you have a price for a minute, or how does it work? Yeah, it's a subscription base because we actually provide the sign language service and that all depends on, you know, how many minutes you're committing with us. Uh, we sell the hardware package at about $1,500 and then they own the equipment. So they'll have the glasses, the tablet, and the microphone. And then the other things are just kind of figured out depending on the needs. Are there any public venues that are using it right now? Public, yes. So the Pro Football Hall of Fame, they've got it in their, they've got a holographic theater and if I'm a deaf person, I can walk in, and like a hearing person, I can put on the glasses and enjoy the, the theater moment that they have. Uh, Panasonic's a company we're working with who has deaf employees. They have to do trainings on plants and things like that, where having a live person just isn't the best fit for that. And so we connect them through the glasses. Um, <coughs> When yeah, there's a big a event, examples. like uh, political speeches and stuff, right? Yeah. You could you could have potentially like uh, 50 bad uh, hearing people all wearing the glass and one interpreter for all of them. That's so exactly right. Do you right. do that? Yeah, we, we can. Yeah, we can. Because um, then it gets cheaper. They all share the price per minute, right? Yep, exactly. Yep, exactly. Because they always have sometimes a sign language on the side and the corner, but they can have it in the glass. And, and that's another good example of where, you know, normally the sign language interpreter has to be on the side and they can't even be watching the political speaker because they're looking at their interpreter and that's another area where the glasses would add that benefit, right? They put them on and they can watch both. It needs to be ready for this election. <laughs> we need to get it ready, yeah. You have 10 months, right? <laughs> well, they're ready. A lot of things they're happening in now. 2020. Yes. A lot of things. Well, thanks, Nicholas. Thanks nice to meet you. Thanks. All right. So, um, it's exciting. A music every day. A lot of things. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, and the CES is um, is like a big show every year. Yep. CES is not really the consumer electronics show. It's really about technology and innovation. There's people here from the car industry, right on through to, of course, the 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 consumer electronics industry. Here at Delta over here, they fly airplanes, right? Around the corner, they've got these exoskeleton robots that they're showing. It's got very little to do with consumer electronics. So a lot of companies come here and they show, it's a showcase for how they share what's going on with their company and the latest things that are happening. But you're also becoming more and more of a consumer 
electronics company also. Well, we certainly have consumer offerings. The blade, the blade we have a version of consumer. it that's, that's only $7.99. Yeah. These ski goggles, I think, are like, I'm yeah. not sure what the price is, but you know, that's certainly a consumer product. Yeah. The Smart Swim over there is $49.99. Yeah. So, that's, that said, we're also working on technology that is going to be like the Kingsman style glasses. I don't know if folks know the Kingsman, but it's a great movie. <laughs> so you have lots of cool things happening. Yeah, we do. Like the future products also. Yes. All right. And are you the market leader for smart glass? I think in a lot of ways, Musics is. I mean, our products are more comfortable. They can be worn all day long. Think about it, when you're working in a warehouse and you got eight hours to put in, a HoloLens is not something that easily wears for eight hours worth of run time. Well, I mean, market leader in terms of shipments. I really don't know Maybe. what everybody, it's hard to tell, right? Because there's some private companies in this game. Nobody tells how many HoloLenses were shipped. I think Microsoft probably gives a fair number of them away too. So it's really hard, Nick, to know. I think you're definitely bigger than Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're doing okay though. I can tell you, this is a market that's going to be in the billions. Ultimately, when it's right, a lot of people don't get this, but it's going to replace your, your smartphone for many, many people. And when that happens, it's billions of units on an annual basis. So it's just starting, but we're on the front end of this curve that is going to be a game changer. Next month is the Mobile World Congress. Yes, we will be there. So that's, uh, you're going to replace the whole mobile world. Yeah. We're working on it, that's All right. right. Cool.